Donald Trump and his supporters really think black people are fools or race traders or something else. I mean, they're publicly stating on the record that if he gets back in office, they're going to implement anti-racist protections for white people. Yet, he expects black people to vote for him and to help him get back in office so that he can implement such an anti-black agenda? I mean, the man really thinks that we are stupid. The question is, are we? Stay with me. I'll explain what I mean. Hello, everyone. This is attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. Each and every week, we bring you at least one legal analysis of some trending story regarding politics, policies, personalities, or pop culture to empower you with the information you need to defy an unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, share, comment, and click the bell so you'll get notified when we upload one of these videos. Well, I can't hardly help myself from laughing as I talk about today's topic. Donald Trump must really think that black people are just totally fools, that we're stupid, that we hate ourselves so much that we would help him implement his anti-racist protections for white people. That is crazy. Yet, there are many black people who seemingly are willing to vote for him, to give him that chance to do just that. We look like fools out here. I mean, the man is telling us, his followers are telling us exactly what they intend to do, exactly what they intend to do. And none of it includes doing anything beneficial for black people. It's all about protecting white people. And yet, he wants black people to help him. He has the nerve to get in front of the television cameras and say these things and his supporters. It is amazing. So I'm referring to an article that was written by an online publication called Axios. I believe is the way you pronounce it. Uh, Let's go to my iPad here so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Exclusive Trump allies plot anti-racism protections for white people. (laughs) I mean, wow. They are plotting an anti-racism protectionist agenda for white people. In other words, where anti-racist policies are put forward to fight racism, they're going to put forth a counter agenda to fight those anti-racist policies to protect white people from those anti-racist policies. Not to try to help white people become less racist, but to protect them from anti-racist policies. And yet... Black folks are intending, some of them, to support this man. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? Tell me, somebody. (laughs) What? Did we collectively fall and bump our heads? I'm being facetious. I know that when you go through the kind of horrendous oppression that we've gone through, and suffered the things that we've suffered. I know a people can come out of that damaged psychologically and mentally. I get it. But to this degree, yes, I am a minister. I am very familiar with the story of the nation of Israel coming out of 400 years of slavery. And I'm very familiar with how anytime things went wrong, with them after they had, after God had delivered them from slavery, they would always turn back 
and want to go back into slavery. They were so messed up psychologically that God allowed them to wander in the wilderness until everyone over 20 years old died out because he couldn't do anything with those folks because of the psychological damage they had suffered from that slavery. And unfortunately, we see that in the African-American community. Now, let's look at some of the particulars of this article. It is, it is quite frankly amazing. So, if Donald Trump returns to the White House, close allies want to dramatically change the government's interpretation of civil rights era laws to focus on anti-white racism rather than discrimination against people of color. Now, you know, I have warned you about this. I told you that they were going to focus on the 1964 Civil Rights Act. They've already gutted the Voter Rights Act. I told you this was coming. Long before they made this, basically, this announcement through this, uh, this online publication. I knew this was coming. I practiced civil rights law. I knew what was coming. And it is here. If he is reelected, they will implement this program just like I said. And boy, they got the power to do it. Because six members of the United States Supreme Court, six out of nine, agree with everything they're doing. And so every case they put in front of this Supreme Court that undermines the Civil Rights Act of 64, they will approve it. They will do it. And some of you have said things like, well, let them do it. We don't need it. We need our own. All of this stuff. What are you all talking about? You don't understand. You don't, you literally don't understand how important the Civil Rights Act of 64 is for us as African Americans. You, you don't, you really don't. You just don't understand. You don't get it. It, 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 it. It, it, it just goes over your head. It, it literally goes over your head. You don't understand the protections that that 64 Civil Rights Act give us in terms of jobs, in terms of so many different things. So if any of you lift your hand to help them get reelected, you are literally lifting your hand against the African-American community, literally, because they're telling us publicly and up front what they intend to do. And these are, according to this article, these are Trump close allies. This doesn't even include Project 2025 that I told you about in a previous video. Project 2025 is something sponsored by the Heritage Foundation, and it includes a few thousand people who want to do more than just gut the Civil Rights Act. They want to get rid of entire parts of the government, like the Department of Education, the EPA, and on and on and on. These folks want to remake this country into a fascist country, point blank, a white ethno state. And if some of you all go into those polling stations and pull the lever for Donald Trump, now knowing what he's going to do, then yes, some of us are as nonsensical as he thinks. Wow. I mean, this is, it's amazing. Hey everyone, I am attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. Recently, I took a look at our analytics and I noticed something shocking. Many of you, Watch our videos, and I believe you enjoy them, but you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? Again, I was shocked because I know our content is empowering and informative. Plus, our 2024 goal is to have 150,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Please help us by hitting that subscribe button, especially you young folks. We particularly want to increase our number of young subscribers. Thanks for all your continued support. 
We appreciate it very much. Let's, let's read some more of this. Why it matters. Trump's Justice Department would push to eliminate or upend programs in government and corporate America that are designed to counter racism that has favored whites. I guess I'm mainly talking to you people who may be contemplating supporting Trump and you're now embracing Candace Owens and you're opening up to this whole white conservative thing here. Well, let's just for a moment use our common sense. Why would any black person support a president who brings with him dedicated white supremacists who intend to remake the government into a government that even more so protects white people and remakes society into a society that even more so, and I say more so because it already does, but now they want to basically dismantle any and every law, policy, practice, program that simply was put in place to help black folks try to achieve full equality. So if you agree with that, I mean, do you, come on, just use your common sense here. Do you really agree with that? Do you agree with helping white supremacists remake the government and remake society in such a way that it would provide you less protections and more for them? Really? Would you, for example, would you look Frederick Douglass, if this was possible, we know it's not, would you look Frederick Douglass in his face and say, yes, I'm going to support these white supremacists, undo things, Frederick, that you fought for? Would you look Harriet Tubman in the face and say, yes, Ms. Tubman, I think I'm going to support uh, the people who want to take us back? Or yes, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, I'm going to support the people that you fought in the 60s for the very laws that I benefit from. Are you going to look Dr. King in the face and others, Megar Evers and so many others, Emmett Till, so many others look them in the face if it were possible and say, yes, I think it's time to support Trump despite the fact that he is an avid white supremacist and his followers. I think that's what's in the best interest of black people to support a white supremacist cabal that has admitted on the record that they are coming to office to protect white people and to be anti-black and to be anti-anti-racist <laughs> and to be anti-anti-racism. I mean, they're going to be, they're telling us they're going to be anti anti-racism. They're going to fight anti-racism so that there can be all the racism that they want to do. And you're going to help them? Wow. Man, I, 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 I struggle to understand why any black person would support Trump and MAGA. Project 2025 when they are telling us up front exactly what they intend to do. There's more. Targets would range from decades old policies aimed at giving minorities economic opportunities to more recent programs that began in response to the pandemic and the killing of George Floyd. So anything put in place, anything put in place to help black folks get the knee and the foot of white America off our necks they're going to fight those things so that they can continue to put their feet and knees on our necks. And we're going to support that. I, I, I've, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. Trump campaign spokesperson Stephen Chung, I think, told uh, Exios, 
As President Trump has said, all staff po offices, initiatives connected to Biden's un-American policy will be immediately terminated. So any and everything that Biden did, and this should tell you, by the way, because a lot of you will get up here and call Joe Biden Jim Crow Joe. Well, apparently Trump and his followers know that Joe has not been Jim Crow Joe while in office and so on because they intend to undo all that Joe Biden has done. If Joe Biden has pushed Jim Crow policies, they would be all in support of his policies. But they're saying we're going to get rid of all of the things that Biden has tried to do over the past going on four years to help black folks. That is over. That day is done. That day is finished. If we get back in the White House, over. Let's keep reading. America first cited the Civil Rights Act of 1964 in February in a lawsuit against CBS and Paramount Global for what the group argued was discrimination against a white straight man who was a writer for the show SEAL Team in 2017. So they targeted the Civil Rights Act of 1964 in a lawsuit recently. This Supreme Court, these six conservative justices will chop away at the Civil Rights Act of 1964 if they get the chance, and now they got the chance. They are working this thing. They are working this. Man, Trump got six, got three extra conservatives on the court. Now there's six out of nine, a hard, fast majority. And now these different lawsuits and nonprofit organizations and law firms are filing lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit to get these issues, to get these civil rights laws in front of this conservative court so that that court can just chip away at all of this. And that's all a part of their plan to do what? Make America great again. <laughs> and we seriously, seriously, seriously are considering supporting these people? Really? If someone says to you, I'm going to shoot you between the eyes. Would you please hold the gun steady right there so that I can make sure I hit you right where I'm trying to hit you? Would you please help me do that? <laughs> I, I, I mean, that is a little bit of hyperbole, but it makes the point, right? It makes the point. Folks, we can't be serious. In February, the group filed a civil rights complaint against the NFL over its Roney rule. A rule that simply says you should interview a black person. Especially in a league that is 70% black. You should at least interview a coach of the African-American descent. I mean, it, it, it's like it, it, no one should have even had to say it. The Roney rule just makes sense. But they're targeting that. They're targeting any and everything out there intended to help African Americans. Again, that is a part of their anti-racism anti agenda. All to protect white people. A people, by the way, who are still firmly in control of this nation, firmly. I don't even know what they mean about protect white people. White people don't need protection. White people got seven to 10 times more wealth than black people. White people are, they control the, the wealth of this nation. Black folks only have like two, 3% of this nation's wealth. Most of it is owned by a very small band of very wealthy white people in corporations. And those corporations are for the most part owned and operated by white people. White people don't need protection. That is a red herring. That is a straw man's argument. 
That is deception. That is evil. But it's working. And some of you, some of you intend to help them do this. All right. Other Trump aligned groups are preparing for a future Trump Justice Department to implement or challenge policies on a broader scale. We got Kristen Clark over in the uh, Justice Department. She's over the Civil Rights Division. She has been out there fighting police brutality. That's over if Donald Trump comes to office. She has been out there fighting corporations that discriminate against blacks. That's over if Trump wins the election. They're telling us all that's over. All of those measures are over. The Department of Education, with its civil rights laws that Obama implemented, were already gutted by Betsy DeVos, and now Biden's Secretary of Education has re-implemented some of those uh, civil rights policies. They're gone. You see how they are attacking HBCUs, black corporations. All of that is getting ready to become turbocharged if Trump wins re-election. And the man leads in some polls and his numbers with black folks are increasing. Okay, the Heritage Foundation, Project 2025. I talked about that in another video. Please go watch that video. Such groups have gained momentum with the Supreme Court's turn to the right. I talked about that. In 2024, a federal judge blocked a $4 billion program to help black farmers. I want you to hear me very clearly about this one. I am from the South. I grew up in a farming area. There were farms all around me. I'm a country boy. I'm a Southerner and a country boy. I'm proud of it, by the way. I grew up seeing powerful black farmers with hundreds of acres of land. Most of them lost their land because of just blatant discrimination. Those of you from the South, you know what I'm talking about. Some of you young folk, I, I don't know. You just don't know. You don't know these things, I believe. I, I, I mean, like the crazy stuff Candace Owens be talking about. She never lived in the South. She doesn't know what that's all about. But you don't have to go to the South. There's, there's lots of racism in the North. I, I, I don't get it. But the black farmers lost most of their land. And as a result, they sued and finally got some compensation. And now a white federal judge blocked the compensation for these black farmers losing their land. It was a man here in Texas, Sid Miller. I think he was the agricultural commissioner for the state of Texas. He filed a lawsuit saying it was unfair for black folks to get compensation, called it reparations, I think. White folks are the ones who took black farmland. They weren't discriminated against. Yet he was able to successfully block that program. This is the insanity that we have put up with in this country for 400 years, just outright insanity. What they're saying, the Trump campaign directed Axios to the candidates already stated positions bashing Biden's policies promoting equity. And again, I gotta say, some of you have been very vocal, Jim Crow Joe, yet he's the one pushing equity policies that Trump intends to get rid of all of them. Come on, folks. Come on. Every institution in America is under attack from this Marxist concept of equity, Trump said in 2023. I will get this extremism out of the White House, out of the military, out of the Justice Department, and out of our government. 
So that is the man right there that some of you intend to support. And some of you even got jobs and other benefits because of equity types of programs. He says that's Marxism. You don't deserve that. You should not have been given that. Forget racism. And that's who you want to support. I, I don't understand. And I'm not a Democrat, by the way. I'm, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent voter. And there are some serious issues I have with the Democratic Party. But at this time in American history, Donald Trump telling us through his allies what he intends to do should be an alarm bell for every African-American person that you should not join the anti-civil rights brigade led by Donald Trump. When we see those pictures and videos of those folks out there being water hosed down, dogs being released on them, they are being lynched, doing all those things for these precious, cherished rights that we have, you mean to tell me you're going to vote for the, the group, the man and his his allies who want to undo all of that? Really? On some trumped up lies? And I mean that with all the pun intended. Really? Seriously? The Trump campaign's Stephen Chung added, President Trump is committed to weeding out discriminatory programs and racist ideology across the federal government. But what they deem to be discriminatory programs and racist ideology against white people. Again, white people don't need protection. White people are in control. They have the power and the privileges. They don't need protection. They say that crap to justify their anti-anti-racism. Their anti-anti-racist agenda. Between the lines, a CBS poll last November found that 58% of Trump voters believe that people of color were advantaged over white people. 58% of Trump voters believe that black people, people of color, were advantaged over white people. Just 9% of Biden voters said the same. That's the crowd you want to protect? That's the crowd you want to join? Are you serious? What advantages do we have when, again, we own less than 3% of this nation's wealth? We're the first fired, the last hired. Economists say the average black person doesn't have $400 if, they, if an emergency arose. Some economists predict by 2040, black folks will have zero net worth. We barely chair any corporations. We have to fight like crazy to get in these places of power. And then we're out at the drop of a dime. Even in spaces where we excel, for example, sports. We don't even control that. We don't have advantages even there. The NFL, the NBA. I mean, yet they say 58%, 58% of them say black folks are advantaged. That is just the crap that they say 
to justify their anti-blackness. That's all that is. All right. Polls also show that Trump is gaining support among black and Latino voters. Trump has portrayed himself as the victim of racism and, and with his legal troubles. I, 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 it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing that any African-American person would support this man when they are openly, openly stating what their agenda is. This, uh, if I can get back to it, this article that I'm reading from, this is a national article. This is a national publication. I mean, this is not hidden. This is, this is a national publication. I mean, they are, <laughs> I mean, they are, they're making it very clear what they intend to do. I mean, it's, here it is. It's a national. I, I read parts of this article to you just, just then. I mean, here it is. They are on the record. They're on the record. Essentially saying, this is what we're going to do. And black folks, come help us. I know they be in their meetings, their suites, their offices, laughing, just laughing at us, just over a beer, over a cocktail, over whatever they do, just totally laughing with their feet kicked back, laughing at black people, supporting an anti, anti-racism agenda. Anyway, I am Attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. We bring you this type of content weekly to try to educate and empower you to defy this unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. We got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do, but we are we're not discouraged. We're going to continue to bring this content because if there's anything Trump has shown us, if you repeat something long enough, even lies, people will start believing it. So we're just going to keep telling you, keep repeating what we're saying. Okay? Thank you. Peace.